Sea Lion 2019.1 is our first major release for the year and is packed with big new features, as well as some great refinements to what we already have. So let's take a tour of some of the changes. First a focus on coding. We continue to more deeply integrate Clang D into our language engine. And in this release, we're enabling Clang D based code highlighting, which can actually make the editor more responsive. We're also now using Clang D to calculate the location for quick fixes, although we still provide the fixes themselves with our own engine. And as for error messages, we're now able to offer even more detail in some cases. We're also continuing to integrate more Clang based tools. And for 2019.1, we're introducing Clang format integration. Now, if you have a project that has a .clang format file in it, you can switch the formatting engine from our own system to Clang format for this project. Formatting rules are used when you reformat code, of course, but they're also used when laying out new code with code generation features, as well as changing existing code with refactoring or quick fixes. And of course, as you write fresh code, indentation preferences will be respected. Code may also be reformatted when being pasted in. But code style is about more than just formatting though. In this release, we're adding support for naming conventions. An exhaustive set of identifier types can have naming rules specified with different casing styles and optional prefixes and suffixes. You can also specify a header guard style here composing it from a mix of fixed and dynamic components. If you prefer to use Pragma once, that can still be specified as before. Naming conventions are applied when generating code, refactoring existing code or applying quick fixes, or when auto-completing new code. They are also used to generate warnings if you enable the inconsistent naming inspection, complete with quick fixes. Language injections finally come to C-Line, but what are they? We often end up with bits of other languages in string literals in our source code. Not only do we not get syntax highlighting, code completion, or other inspections on those, but it often involves awkward escape sequences. Now you can tell C-Line what the embedded language is and if it supports it, and there's a lot to choose from, it'll inject support temporarily. Now you get full syntax highlighting and code completion in place. You can also open the injected code in its own window, where you can edit it without the extra escape sequences. And in some cases you can do extra things, such as checking a string against this regex here. When renaming a file that has a class in it of the same name, you usually want to rename that class too. However, previously we did this silently. Now we ask first. And as a bonus, if you have a header guard that matches the pattern in your naming convention setup, as we talked about earlier, we'll rename that too. Talking of refactoring, for some time there's been an annoying issue when extracting variables or methods that use symbols from libc++. This was because those symbols are actually defined in an inner namespace, then later exported out so you don't actually see it but our refactoring engine was faithfully reproducing it. But clearly this is not what we want or expect in our code, so we've now been able to detect this case and fix it up. So std symbols continue to appear directly in std after refactoring. Of course, that doesn't just apply to the std namespace, but for any code that exports symbols out of an inner namespace. As part of our effort to use more of Clang D as a language engine, we're also adding new checks directly to the Clang D project. This time we're adding the member function can be static check. And now the build system. We've supported compilation DB projects since 2018.2, but without build and run integration, just the code insights. Well, we're now adding this with the ability to add custom build targets and run configs. First, we'll need to create a custom build target. There's a new settings page for that. We can set up external executables for both build and clean steps to associate with this target. And now we can use these to clean and build our project. To run or debug though, 
we'll need to set up a custom build application. You just need to associate it with the custom build target and tell it where to find the executable it builds. As with any other run config, you can also supply arguments and the environment. And now you can build and run with just about any third party system. With the compilation DB support we introduced before, the experience is completed with all of the code insight that the editors rely on. Now the debugger. C line shows the current values of all variables in scope as you step through your code, both in the debug window and in line in the code. While this is usually exactly what you want, there is an overhead in doing so that you may not always need. So now you can mute variables while you don't need them, and it will save the debugger having to calculate and render their values on every step. When you do need them, you can load a particular value, or just unmute them all again. When stepping into code you don't have the source for, we show the disassembly. We've now improved this by annotating the disassembly with function names. We've also extended it to work with LLDB, in addition to GDB. And for a low level view of your data, we've now added a memory view. For any pointer to raw memory, select the memory viewer to see the hex dump. This is a live view, so as the underlying memory changes, the view is updated to reflect that, and in fact will highlight the changes. And for remote development, we've changed the way files on remote search paths are synced back. We sync files locally, even from outside the project, so we can debug and navigate into them. But this is expensive to do too often, so we no longer resync automatically. Instead, you should manually resync from remote hosts. Alternatively, if you prefer the automatic behavior, you can set this option in the registry. Also in remote dev, you can now connect over IPv6. Now to the environment and UI, we've added a new recents view, recent locations. This shows you focused snippets from all the places in your project that you visited recently in reverse chronological order. And not just files, here you can see it showing the new memory view, for example. But the most noticeable change for the UI is support for custom theme plugins. You've long been able to switch between light and dark themes and customize the editor window. Well, now you can customize every visual aspect of the IDE. Start with any of the freely downloadable plugins or take full control yourself. And as usual, we've updated the versions of our bundle tools, CMake and LLDB, as well as the latest version of Sigwin that we support. And the Rust plugin has had a big update, including profiler support, completions for out of scope items, language injections in doc comments, and more. We'll go into more of these changes in more detail in the near future. So that's just a sampling of what makes CLine 2019.1 a great start to a year of releases. As always, you can find out more on the website where you can also download a 30 day free trial.